Good evening once again. I'm Stephanie Rule. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is about to enter day 41, while global outrage is growing over unimaginable atrocities against civilians that have been reported in a town just outside Kyiv. A warning. The images are graphic and disturbing, but there is no way for us to give you the real idea of what happened without showing you the real pictures. I want you to see what is left of the town of Bucha. Ukraine has now accused Russia of carrying out a massacre against scores of residents there, Russia denying that allegation. Today, Ukrainian President Zelensky visited Bucha and met with those who survived Russia's deadly occupation. He said more than 300 people were tortured and killed, and the list of victims is likely going to grow. He plans to address the U.N. Security Council on this issue tomorrow. Our own Richard Engel has more from Ukraine. When Russian troops pulled out of the Kyiv suburb of Bucha, they exposed the horrors of their failed occupation. Bodies lined the streets, some with their hands bound, executed at close range. Others bore the scars of torture. The president's office said women were raped. The mayor of Bucha said they discovered two mass graves. Other bodies were lined up in cellars. Today, Ukraine's President Zelensky visited Bucha and said the Russian army treated Ukrainian civilians worse than animals. This is a war crime, he said, and it will be recognized by the world as genocide. President Biden is calling for a war crime trial to hold Russian President Putin accountable. This guy is brutal, and what's happening in Bucha is outrageous. And everyone's seen it. Russia's foreign minister today claimed Ukrainians staged the aftermath in Bucha with actors pretending to be dead. That it is preposterous, given all the evidence, may be beside the point. Independent polls in Russia show Putin's approval rating appears to be going up amid a wave of nationalism. Russia appears to be gearing up for a new offensive in the east and in the south along the Black Sea with this new strike on an oil depot in Odessa. Survivors in Bucha working to remove all traces of the Russian occupation while also trying to come to terms with the violence they witnessed. NBC's Molly Hunter has that part of the story. Today in Bucha, they're going house to house, working quickly, desperately trying to remove the landmines the Russians left behind. Russian soldiers occupied Ludmila's home for more than a month. They broke the locks on the doors. She was forced downstairs to the basement. They threatened to throw grenades at us, she says. They cursed at us, saying our husbands were Nazis. Throughout Bucha today, the carnage laid bare in the sun. Olenka's brother had been missing for more than a week. She says we found him five days ago, lying on the street. Three bullets to the leg, one to the heart, one to the lungs. And here in the western city of Lviv, we meet 32-year-old Andre Lebeda. I didn't expect that they are so heartless. With his brother-in-law Nikolai and their families, they escaped Bucha on March 9th. We saw like horrific things like the um, murdered people on the street outside, like the civilians, and they just was shot. They were just killed. Where were the gunshot wounds? Like the chest, yeah, something like this. And these are people in civilian clothes, for sure? For sure, civilians. A senior U.S. defense official says two-thirds of Russian forces around Kyiv have now been moved to different areas, and they are restocking with supplies. Today, the White House said there would be more sanctions to punish Moscow for what happened in Bucha, and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan laid out what's next. The next stage of this conflict may very well be protracted. We should be under no illusions that Russia will adjust its tactics which have included and will likely continue to include wanton and brazen attacks on civilian targets. Meanwhile, U.S. authorities have seized a 255-foot luxury yacht in Spain owned by a sanctioned billionaire ally of Vladimir Putin. This was the Justice Department's first seizure as part of its new task force to enforce sanctions against oligarchs.